As some of you are aware, at the end of my walk, my wife, went home to be with God. And in her absence, I determined that I had to do things to occupy my time rather than sitting and feeling sorry for myself. I early made the decision to think of her gain, not my loss, and to appreciate that daily. And I then became aware of the food pantry. It's occupied, it occupies the educational building and it it's open from uh, Tuesdays through Thursday, from the 9 until 12 each day. And then I began to think, what's its purpose? Well, unlike you folks, and myself included, we got up this morning and we thought, what will we have for breakfast? And there was a choice that a lot of people out here in our neighborhood who have no choices. It's the question is, do we have anything for breakfast, or lunch, or dinner, and for how many days? And then what do we do? Where do we go? We came in, and I came in one morning, and there were 35 people lined up beside the, the building. We were fortunate, and we worked with them in about 40 minutes. It was a hurricane inside the building. But we knew that when they left, that those people did not have that concern, at least for that day, or maybe the next four or five days. So I became involved in it and received much, much more than I was part of what was given. It, um, we don't ask, why are you here? And what are your needs? How can we help you? We've already made the decision to be there. Four or five people working in the pantry itself and two of us working out front, registering the folks coming in and giving them a smiling face and a, a warm salutation when they leave. It began 15 years prior to May in 2019 when Folks got together with whatever supplies they had and prepared shopping bags, and they determined what was put into the bag, and each person that came received one. At that time, we were servicing about 25 people a week. Well, word got around, and we were now serving about 250 families which represents about 500 people a week. You would have parents coming in, husband and wife, or a guy and his friend, and singles, but there are more, many, many more that are feeding seven to eight people of which they're responsible for. We aligned ourselves in May of 2019 with the Low Country Food Bank. The foods we distribute cost between $350 and $500 a week. We supply those groceries from contributions to the congregation. We have two drives a year specifically for the food bank. One is for Vacation Bible School where we charge the children that if you want to do certain things, and you bring so many camp goods. And we have those who are very heavy in the football, that there is a, uh, a drive that involves people who are highly interested in the Super Bowl. And you sort of have to have a few food as prizes. Um, <clears throat> the people are given a menu when they come in, and from that menu they're going to designate how many folks that they are supplying food for. 
and what's what we dispense to them are all types of breads, dry groceries, pop top canned goods, because most of them don't have. Tell me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can we products, some milk, a few bakery sweets, a small variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, and instant meal items that they can warm up. They also receive a clothing voucher from the thrift store down the street in the amount of 15 bucks. But in addition, they can get a pair of pants, a shirt, a pair of shoes. We also offer a laundry certificate from the local laundromat, which they permit one washing and one drying of clothes per month. Those services are always supplied to the very, very, very needy. What has made this interesting is the miracles that you see happening. And this is where God is deeply involved in our congregation. We had a young lady who rode all night to get here to visit her dying mother, but long passed before she died. And her soul thought that morning when she came into the food pantry was, I have nothing to wear to the funeral. You know about the shed that's over here on the side where we put clothing and um, other goods that we, we no longer need. It was cleaned out on Monday. She arrived on Tuesday. And when I say clean, if you've ever been in there, it's completely clean. Everything is gone. But um, Julie Moore, I mentioned it to her that this lady's need was not of food. It was clothing to attend her mother's funeral. And Julie, based on nothing more than faith, knowing what had happened the day before, asked her to go down to the shack with her. God's foreknowledge of what our needs are in life are massive. For him, there was one black jacket, one skirt, one white blouse, all in her size. Uh, instead of coming feeling down from it's like she knew the joy that she would experience by being properly clothed and paying respect to her mother. And the last little thing that happened was this gentleman came in and he was so distraught because he had a son and he had two boys. But one of them was celebrating the birthday, he had neither the money nor a source for getting a dessert or a cake, birthday cake for the boy. And you could you could sense it when he walked through the door and he was withdrawn and he didn't he, did, he was at his last stand. We happen to remember that in the freezer in the pantry was a birthday cake that had been there over a week. He left with a huge smile on his face and a lot of thanks to us. I asked God when Sarah was in the process of preparing to leave us to surround her with angels. He did. And the doctors and nurses, pastors, and family. And they have followed me and members of my family since her passing. And those two little revelations, the jacket, the shirt, the blouse, came at the right moment. Reassured me that he was with us 